important to know that everybody has a story. Everybody has a testimony. It takes something to reach you. And God has different ways of dealing with different people because he knows all of us. He knows what it takes to get through these thick skulls of ours. Psalms 139. I just want to read this, and I'm going to talk to you just a quick word from this about the type of search you allow God to give you. Psalms 139. Holy Spirit, word my lips. Prepare every heart and every life in this room to receive this word. We know it will accomplish that which you sent it forth to accomplish because your word does not come back void. In Jesus' name. O Yahweh, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Yahweh, you know it altogether. You have hedged or garrisoned or barricaded me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. And such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I send into heaven, you're there. If, my make, if I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there too. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts, and you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully put together in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, and when as yet there was none of, none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O Yahweh! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake... I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O Yahweh. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred, and I count them my enemies. Search me, O Yahweh, and know my heart, Try me and know my anxieties and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in thy way everlasting. When you come to church, when you go to a place where the Holy Spirit is moving, there's a spotlight, there's a searchlight on every one of your hearts in this room. He knows everything about you. Wherever you go, he's there. You can't hide from him. And when you come into a place, now you can go to a lot of churches. There's a lot of churches out there that are going to tell you what you want to hear. Ah, oh, you're wonderful. And, oh, da -da, and then you walk out of there and say, boy, I sure am great. That's not what God wants you to know. God wants you to know that he sure is great and that we sure need him. And so a word like this, and you know that he knows us, he loves us. How do I know he loves us? Because Jesus went to the cross for us. God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. So I know he loves us. Jesus gave of himself to die on the cross. So I know he loves us. So today, when you read a scripture like this, there's a searchlight, there's a spotlight. And it's shining into all the resources of your heart. We all have places in our hearts, just like in your house. You've got places or your apartment. You've got places where you can stash stuff. Nobody would know where to look. God knows where to look for your stash in your heart. My sister Kate, speaking of stash, 
back when I was a wilder person, I used to have things to stash. And my sister would wake me up, half wake me up, and ask me where my stash was. And then the next day I'd come out and I found my stash was a lot less than it used to be. And it went on for about a week and I was thinking, what's going on here? So one night I thought, hmm, something's wrong in Denmark. So I wasn't really asleep this time. And she came and she said, because I'd move it, I kept moving it. Hey, here she come. Hey, where's your stash? And I told her. And off she went, getting up there in the ceiling, tile in the bathroom. And then I said, look down. Mm -hmm. You owe me some money, sister. She smoked me. So, but God always knew where the stash was. And some of you hide things in your heart, but you can't hide them from God. And so I want to talk to you about search, the searchlight that you allow the Lord to perform on you. While there are two base, you know, revival, we talk about revival. Well, that's when you allow the Lord to show you what's really going on in your heart. And when he shows you something wrong, you need to repent and come to the Lord and say, God, I am so sorry because I've offended you. David sinned. David sinned terribly. He slept with a married woman and then got her pregnant. And then to hide the pregnancy, he ended up getting her husband killed. What a terrible sin. And yet, when David was found out, he went to the Lord and said, against you and you alone have I sinned. Sure, he sinned against Bathsheba. Sure, he sinned against Uriah. But ultimately, when we sin, we sin against God. And when we, when we sin, we need to go to God and say, Lord, I am so sorry. So I want to talk to you about some different types of searches. Now, here's some of the searches that we allow God to give. It's called a surface search. Some of us presume that we can keep God from going any further if we say, okay, Lord, come on in. And you hide things under the bed. A surface search. Yeah, I mean, I know I've got a foul mouth and sometimes I say the wrong thing. But there's deep things going on in there that you don't let him to get after. If he just does a, sur a surface search, and it's again, if you only allow him there. That's why David says, Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. He's not saying, just, just see if there's, knock a couple of bumps off. He's saying, go into the cellars of my heart, into the inner recesses. Just like Justin was saying, the type of person he was. Now, I didn't know all the stuff he told you today. I just knew that he was supposed to work with us. That's all I knew. His grandmother caught me out mowing my lawn, and she said, uh, hey, I have a grandson that needs a job. I said, well, have him call me. And as soon as I talked to him, I knew this was a God thing. And it has he's a great employee, great worker. And it's, it's an, an honor to see what the Lord is doing. It's really exciting to see his eyes get big when he'll say, man, I'm really worried about this, and then everything goes smooth. I'm worried about this, and then everything goes smooth. So he's starting to learn. So blind to our truly sinful state, we vainly present to God just our outward credentials. That's what we do, do with the surface search. That's not what he's saying here. He knows about everything in your heart. He knows about the things you're most ashamed of. He knows about the thing that you did that nobody else knows. He knows. And he's saying, I know, and I still love you. I still sent Jesus to die on the cross for you because I love you that much. So with that kind of love, why would we not let him in? So you got the surface search, then you got the spot search. The spot search is a little more intense than the surface search. It simply means we've decided to allow him into certain areas of our heart. Come on into the kitchen, the living room. <laughs> we don't have a basement, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we don't have an attic. <laughs> don't worry about that, you know. But we let him come into certain areas. That's a lot of churchy people. We go to church every single Sunday, and, you know, we admit, well, I chew too much gum. All right, so, you know, I smoke cigarettes, okay? You know, I don't think you should smoke cigarettes because it's bad for your health and your, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. But it's not going to keep you out of heaven. But there's deep things. There's corrupted things down inside. Hate. Prejudice. Wickedness. Things down deep. That's what God wants to heal you. You know, if you've got a cancer in your body, the doctor needs to get in and get the cancer out or else it's going to spread to the whole body. If you don't let the Lord get inside and get all that crap out of there, 
It will affect you. It will infect you. My friend that I'm working with, he's slowly dying of cancer. He's just decided not to fight the fight anymore. And I can see daily when I go over there, every day he's getting a little closer to going to heaven. I hate to see it, but I know that he's ready to go be with Jesus. And the work that the doctors was doing wasn't doing anything. So now we've both just decided Jesus can heal him. I know he could. But if he doesn't, then he's going to be with Jesus. What could be better? So the spot search doesn't work. Because when he starts, oh, what's that door go to? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Pay no attention to the door. You start to squirm. That's why sometimes when I'm preaching some of these messages, I see people start squirming in their seats. They get uncomfortable because the Holy Spirit's hitting home. And that's what he does. The Holy Spirit doesn't do spot searches. He doesn't do surface searches. He sees it all. So the search that needs to happen is the cellar search. This is the search which David's talking about. He said, if I go here, you're there. If I go there, you're there. Come in, children. Come in, children. Children, come here, buddy. Come just sit up here until I'm done. I won't be too much longer. Let him come in, Mitch. Yeah, awesome, cute. Look at these monkeys. Come on, children. Just come up here and sit down. I won't eat your lunch. This little girl give me your lunch. Would you give me your lunch? You would? Oh, you had a nice Bible lesson, didn't you? Hi, Shane. Have a seat, brother. That'll work. So, the basement search, he wants to access the creaky, musty corners of the inner man. When you want, if I want to see revival in my heart, that means I've just got to, I got to say, Lord, take it all. Take it all. Look into it and, and heal me. Get rid of it. If you want to be the vessel that God created you to be, and the reason why you're seeing people's lives being changed is because they're meeting him here and they realize he sees it all. How many in this room would say that you've had an encounter with the Lord since you started coming to empty tomb and you know he's for real? Amen? Put him up high. Don't be ashamed. Because you know what? He's real. God ain't playing here. And so when you start getting real, but listen, even if you're a Christian already, even if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, does not mean that there's still not things down in there that he wants to forgive you from. See, when I got saved 38 years ago, it's like there was a big change in me, but yet he's still working off a lot of the rough exteriors. There's still things that he's working on me. And so it's a lifelong thing. I'm never going to be there until I see him face to face. So right now, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is looking in each one of your hearts. Father, today, right now, I pray in Jesus' name that you will look in every one of our hearts. I pray for the, some, some, the people that came here, even those who came for the first time today, that you will let them know that you love them and that you forgive them if they will come and repent to you, that you will restore them, that you will create in them a clean heart, that you'll restore and renew a right spirit within them, that you'll not take your Holy Spirit from them. So this is my prayer, Lord. I pray that right now that there will be repentance here in this church, that you will show us areas of our lives that are wrong, that you are not pleased with. And, and when you show us those areas, you're going to bring them to the front in Jesus' name. So just take a minute. If the Holy Spirit is showing you something in your life that you know is not right and you're ready to be rid of it and you want God to forgive you of that sin, I want you to come down here to the front. He's doing a, holy, he's doing a cellar search. He's looking in your heart. And I want you to bring it down to the front, whatever it is. If it's hatred, if it's pornography, if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if it's whatever it is, I want you to know that he sees it, know that he still loves you, but he wants you to repent of that sin. I want you to bring it down to the front. Ask him to forgive you. Put it on the altar. You know, that's what this altar is for. The altar is for bringing your sacrifices before the Lord. So bring that sin to the Lord. Anybody in this room, if there's nobody, I'm, I'm impressed. But anybody that he's dealing with you, I just want you to bring it down. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I just want you to bring it down. If you're not in that place where you know you're supposed to be today with God, I just want you to bring it to the altar because that's what this altar is for, bringing these things down, those things that are deep in your resources that nobody else knows, but God knows, and he wants to forgive you of this sin. 
So just come to the front, bring it down here, and we're just going to ask God to forgive you, and he is going to forgive you, and he's going to restore you, and he's going to make you whole. Who else is there? You got hatred in your heart, whatever it is, come on. You've got unforgiveness. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart towards anyone, even if you have a good reason for it, I want you to bring that unforgiveness down here to the front because unforgiveness is sin. Jesus said if you don't forgive people their sins, God won't forgive you. Come on. Who else is there? Listen, don't worry about what somebody might think if they see you. They say, oh, they won't know. They won't think I'm tough. I think if you... A tough person, a tough man, he, he admits when he's wrong. And he admits when God, God is definitely the King of kings and Lord of lords. Come on. Anybody else? There's a few more people I know. God is stirring your heart. Just come on. Let's get right with God today. Let's get right with God today. There's going to be a revival that's going to rock this nation. Let's come in on the ground level. Because God's looking for people to work in this thing. And that's going to be you guys. That's going to be you guys. You guys that are coming and getting your hearts right with the Lord. Just give you one more minute and then I'm going to pray for you. Anybody who's sitting there, if you're sitting there and the Holy Spirit is saying to you, go, 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 then come, come, come. Don't argue with the Lord. It's a fight you can't win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, I'm telling you, the Lord loves you guys so much, and he forgives. And so he's doing a seller search. He sees it all. He knows it all. Everything you're most ashamed of, he says, I love you, and I'm ready to forgive you. But the Bible says, you, for number one, you have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And number two, you need to repent of your sins. That means you're going this direction. This is the way I was living. I stop, and I'm going to change direction. I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to live this way. I'm going to be on the road, the highway to holiness. So you guys in the congregation, would you raise up your hands towards these people? We're going to pray for them. You guys that came forward, would you just, I'm going to give you a prayer. I'm just going to pray this prayer. You can use my words, but let it be your surrender. And repeat my prayer after me. Father in heaven, I am so sorry because I've sinned against you. And I know you see it all. And you know it all. And I've offended you. The one I least want to offend. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for taking this the whips. Thank you for taking the nails and being crucified for me. Thank you for dying for me. Now I will live for you. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And from this day forward... My sins are forgiven. I declare I'm free. I'm set free. I'm forgiven. And I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus from this day forward. I believe it. The Bible says it. That settles it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.